Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for looking out us every day. Father, open our hearts and minds so that your word will find a place in us and uh, transform us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you for coming. Uh, today we are looking at uh, living the word. Living the word. And our leading scripture is coming from uh, Matthew 4, verses 1 to 11. That's where we'll get an example that will help to demonstrate and uh, Teach us how we should leave the word. And uh, let's all open our Bibles uh, to Matthew 4, verse uh, 1 to 11. I'll read that scripture because that's the reading scripture for today. Matthew 4, verse 1 to 11. It says, The temptation of our Jesus Christ. I read, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for 40 days, 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell those stones to become bread. And then Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And then the tempter went on, and took him to the holy, the devil took him to the holy city and uh, had him stand on the highest point of the temple. And the devil said, if you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down for it is written. Uh, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone uh it goes on verse uh, 7 says jesus answered him and said it is also written do not put the lord your god into to to the test again the devil took him to a very mountain to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor all this I'll give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me, Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and save him only. Then the devil left him and the angels came from heaven and attended him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God. So yes. Like I said, our, we are looking today at our living the word. And we chose the scripture and an example that will actually teach us how to live the word. And when you live the word, you will be able to actually defend yourself against the enemy, as we shall see when we look at this example. Yes, from that scripture there, we can actually see that... Uh, the background of it is, it says that the Holy Spirit came and took Jesus away and led him into uh, the first thing that he was doing, day and night, 40 days. And he was led to be tempted by the devil. So this was a deliberate act by the Holy Spirit to actually see how Jesus can withstand the taste of darkness. So from the scripture, we can actually see now there is an ensuing battle that is a battle of wits between two kings or two powers here. The power of darkness, who is the king of darkness or the king of lies, the devil. He is now coming to actually clash with the king of truth, which is Jesus, or the king of light. And as these two forces are coming together, the king of light, who is Jesus, and the king of our darkness and lies, who is the devil, they are coming together. And from the scripture, we can see that the king of light, because he's the king of truth, he has always actually withstood the darkness. And uh, we can also see that both of them actually, from the background of this scripture, you can actually see that Jesus, when he was tempted the first time, he quoted the scripture, and then the devil also fought back by also quoting a scripture to Jesus. 
And then Jesus continued to actually use defense of the scripture as we will look at it. And then we can see both of them, they do know the scripture. But the only difference is the other one is actually he lives in the word. He lives in the light. He lives in the truth. That's why he has managed to actually conquer the devil who lives in the lies. He lives in the darkness. So hence, the truth are actually conquered. But the funny part is the devil knows the scripture. Jesus knows the scripture. And the difference is the other one doesn't practice, doesn't leave the scripture. That is the key difference there. You can know the scripture, but if you don't practice, then you're as good as you don't know it. And then when you see the clashing of the light or the truth and the darkness coming together, you can now see that the darkness is defeated and the truth always prevails because it is the truth. Now, let's look at the three examples that are three attacks that Jesus actually faced when he was led to be tempted. Three attacks from the devil. In all instances, we want to see what is it that he is using to fight against the attack from the devil or the deception from the devil. We go back to the scripture, we look at um, uh, in verse uh, 2, we hear that after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was very hungry, yes, of course. And then verse 3, the tempter who is the devil now said to him, because he, the devil realized and he knew Jesus was hungry. Probably at that point in time, you know, when you're hungry, your mind and thoughts sometimes they flash and think about food. So probably at that time, the devil looked into his mind and realized Jesus was hungry, but he was steadfast on the word. So the devil was trying to see whether if his mind has drifted away from the focus on the, on the word. So then the devil tempted and said, okay, if you are the son of God, tell those stones to become bread. This is in verse 3. The tempter is coming. And then Jesus actually... Uh, he pushed back by the word and he said, listen to what he's saying. It is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. This is a scripture that resonates because we are looking at this scripture, it's in the New Testament, but this is not the first time that we have heard these words. The same scripture, actually, Jesus, in this time, he was he was pushing back the devil, standing in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 2, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2 to uh, 3. Let's read and hear what that says so we can see. Jesus is now attacked by the devil in verse 3. And Jesus uses the scripture to actually fight the devil. And where was he standing? What is the scripture that Jesus was quoting? It is a scripture that is found in Deuteronomy uh, 8. Uh, verses 2 to 3, then I'll read that. It says, Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert in those 40 years to humble, in those, those 40 years, and to humble you and to test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether you or not you would keep his commands. Verse 3 says, He humbled you, causing you to hunger just like Jesus was. And then feeding you with manna, in this case Jesus was not fed, which neither you nor your forefathers known, to teach you that where that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. There you are. This is a scripture in Deuteronomy 8, uh, verse 2 to 3, particularly verse 3, pay particular attention to verse 3. This is when Jesus now is actually standing in that scripture, quoting it. The same scripture that was also given and spoken of during the time of Moses, when the Israelites were actually on their excursion to New Jerusalem, to Canaan, as they were promised. So this is now the scripture that Jesus is actually quoting. The devil has tempted him. He goes on and stands in um, Deuteronomy 8, chapter 2, verse 3, and then he quotes the Bible. And this is how he pushed back the, the deception or the lies from the devil. And then, yes, the second temptation that we can look at now, we see. Let's see how he defended the second temptation from the devil, which is also now found in uh, verse 6, because the devil doesn't tire. The devil came back to him again and said, If you are, you are second to the highest point of the temple, 
top of it. And then the devil says, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. Now listen, for it is written, this is not Jesus this time. It is the devil who is quoting. Verse 6, if you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, it is now the devil who is also quoting what Jesus said in the first instance. When he say, it is written, the devil is now also saying, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. This is now what the angel, the devil was doing. Quoting it just like Jesus said, remember he said, it is written, men shall not live by bread alone. And in the second instance, when he was tempted, the devil actually also said, it is written. And then he quoted the scripture there. This is a fascinating battle of wits here. And then Jesus replied to the second temptation by saying, it is also written. <laughs> you hear? The devil said, it is written. Jesus said, it is also written. So it was now a battle of wits, quoting and knowing the scripture, that if you quote the scripture, I am Jesus, I know the Bible in and out. So therefore, you have said it is written, but it is also written. So this is how he was pushing back. I want you to notice and actually understand the battle of wits that was here. This was an intense spiritual battle taking place between darkness and light, between the devil and Jesus, between the liar and the truth. This is what was happening. Then Jesus said, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to test. That's verse 7 there. Jesus rebutted or he pushed back the devil. When the devil actually said, it is also written in verse 6. And I want you to know that when the devil said, it is written, the devil was quoting a scripture. In uh, Psalms 91, uh, verses uh, 11 to 12. So let's look at what the devil said in verse 6 there, when actually the devil, the devil was now trying to deceive Jesus Christ. When he said, uh, if you are the son of God, throw yourself, uh, because uh, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up uh, in their hands, and that you will not strike your foot against the stone. So the devil was now quoting, because the devil, the devil said, it is written. So where was it written? Or where is it written which the devil says it is written? It is actually written in our Psalms 91, verses 11 to 12. I'll read you that so that we can hear what Psalm says. This is um, Psalms 91, verses 11 to 12 says, For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Exactly word for word that the devil quotes, which is found in Matthew uh, verse 6 there. The devil was actually quoting the scripture, which is found in Psalm uh, 91 verse 11 to 12. This is fascinating. It is the devil. Now, when the devil quoted that, Jesus responded again by going back to the same scripture, the same book, which is Deuteronomy. There is quite a significance why Jesus keeps going back to Deuteronomy there. Because Deuteronomy, by its meaning, what does it mean? Remember when we look at the book of Deuteronomy, it says the retelling of the command or the law. So Jesus kept on retelling the command of the word in the Bible. But the devil has actually come up with a scripture in uh, Psalms 91 verses 1142, which is also repeated in Hebrews uh, uh, chapter 1 verse 14, if you read it, it's the same thing. But now let's look at how Jesus defended that and pushed back the devil. When the devil quoted uh, Psalm 91 verses 11 to 14, that it is written. Uh, then Jesus went on to actually use Deuteronomy to defend himself. Let's go back to Deuteronomy uh, chapter, uh, chapter 6 this time, verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 16 says, Do not test your Lord your God, as you did at Massa. So you hear the story? Jesus says, reply the devil there and say, do not quote your, do not actually tempt your, 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 your Lord, test your Lord, your God. That's what Jesus said. And it is actually written in verse, if you go back to Matthew, 
uh, is written in verse 7 where it says, it is, it is also written, because the devil says it's written, do not put the Lord your God to test. So Jesus was now standing in Deuteronomy again, Deuteronomy 6, verse 16. In the first instance, he was standing in Deuteronomy 8, verse 2 to 3. And the reason why he keeps going back to Deuteronomy, because Deuteronomy is actually a book. It is actually a retelling of the word command or the command of the law. What is the Bible commanded us to do? So Jesus was using that to retell what was told by the Bible. That's why he kept on going back to Deuteronomy. And he used it. So yes, the third instance we see the devil now failed because Jesus used it. The word as well, it was written from the devil. Jesus said, it is also written. So he pushed back and then the devil felt, oh, I'm defeated here. And then the devil came up with the third trick that he actually conjured. And the third trick comes in the verse 8. The devil again took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the law of the world and their splendor. And the devil said, all this what you see, I will give you. If you will bow down and worship me. Oh. <laughs> now, Jesus replied. Let's see what he's using now. He replied by saying, Away from me, Satan. For it is written. Again, he comes and says, It is written. So he was now again standing in the scripture. Let's see which scripture was he standing in. For it is written, Worship your Lord God and save him alone. So where, which scripture was he standing again? He is standing again in Deuteronomy chapter 6. So in all instances, he was standing in Deuteronomy. And we say the reason why he was in Deuteronomy is because he wanted to retell the command that was given by the Bible. And it's found in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is all about that. So in this instance, is now in Deuteronomy 6, verse 13 to 15. I'll read that. Deuteronomy 6, verses 13 to 15. Uh, 13 says, For the fear of the Lord, for fear the Lord your God, serve him only and take your oaths in his name. Do not follow other gods, the gods of, uh, peoples, uh, of the peoples around you. For the Lord your God who is among you is a jealous God and, there is, and his anger will burn against you. And he will destroy you from the face of the land. This is the scripture that Jesus quoted in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 13 to 15, rebutting what the devil had said in uh, verse 8 and 9. The devil wanted to be worshipped and show Jesus all the riches and all the splendors of the earth. But Jesus said, No, 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 no. I cannot worship you because it is written in verse Deuteronomy 6, verses 13 to 15, that you shall only worship your Lord. This is exactly the same command that we see. You can also find the same instruction. Uh, it's found in um, Exodus 20 when God was actually giving the Ten Commandments to the Israelites. So Exodus 20, verse 4. Remember the Ten Commandments where God says, ah, You shall not worship any other gods under water and under heavens. I am the only Lord. You shall not serve any other gods. So this is what's similar to what Jesus is talking about. In Deuteronomy 6, chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13 to 15. So yes, this is the five that we have seen. That's why I'm calling it the battle of the weeds here. Because you are having to have two giants, the one of the king of darkness and the king of light and truth. It is actually coming together in the clash of the weeds. They know all, they both know the scripture. But there is one who sent above the rest because he doesn't only know the scripture. Jesus knows the scripture and he lives the word. He lives the scripture. That's why today our heading say, live the word. You must live the word just like Jesus did. Because when you live the word, what it means is, you will only and only live and follow what the word instructs you to do. In all situations, it means you must seek God's guidance in all situations that we face. This is what Jesus did here. He faced all situations from the devil. The three temptations or the three attacks or the three lies or the three deceptions that came from the devil. In all instances, Jesus was standing in the word. He was standing in Deuteronomy. In the first instance was Deuteronomy 8 verse 
2 to 3. In the second instance, it was actually Deuteronomy 6 verse 16. In the third instance, he defended himself using Deuteronomy 6 verse 13 to, 4 to 15, which is similar also to what is found in Exodus 20 verse 4. The devil actually did something that was fascinating here. Because in the first instance, Jesus said, when he was defending, when he was asked to actually convert stones to bread, Jesus began answering by pushing back by saying, it is written, men shall not live by bread alone. And then the devil realized, okay, he is actually defending me and pushing me back by the scripture. And then the second temptation, when the devil was actually tempting Jesus, which is found in verse 6, the devil now also started by quoting what the Bible was saying. That you can fall from where you are because it is written that the, your father, the, the, the Lord, will not allow you to fall because his angels will actually uh, catch you before your foot actually hit the stone. What a fascinating. And when Jesus also saw that the devil has quoted the scripture, he also said, it is also written. You shall only worship your Lord, your God, no one else by quoting Deuteronomy 6. Chapter 16. This is a fascinating encounter of the of light and, and the truth. Darkness and light. Lies and truth. Devil and Jesus. And when we talk of Jesus, we are talking of the truth. He is. John 14, verse 6. I am the light, I am the way, I am the truth. This is the truth that now is actually being pushed by the darkness, who is the devil. The king of all lies, the devil. Now, this is really fascinating. So you, might, you must not underplay this example that we have picked because it has actually shown you two giants, a giant in darkness and a giant in truth or light, who is Jesus. You need to know that the devil knows the scripture more than any one of us. The devil knows the scripture more than any one of us. So at any point in time, if you are not allayed, the devil will actually twist and use the scripture and use any kind of any twist in the truth that you, you, you will be deceived if you don't know the truth. This is what he was trying to do to Jesus Christ. But lucky enough, Jesus is the word himself. He knew the scripture inside out. So he actually rebutted or pushed back by the scripture. When the devil said, it is written, Jesus said, it is also written. So this is what we need to do as apologists. We need to understand the scripture. That's what it means from that example there. So if this is what we have seen here, what are the lessons that we have learned? The biggest and foremost and biggest lesson that we need to know is the devil is always out there to actually deceive us. He's out there to mislead us. He wants us to actually belong to darkness, not in light. So he's always out there to get us by deceiving, by false pretense, by also using words that are not true, by using the scripture itself, try to take us away. Look at what he did to Jesus. He quoted the scripture, the scripture found in Psalm 91 verses 11 to 12. And this is what he was trying to actually mislead Jesus using. So you need to actually know this. That is the biggest lesson. Know your scripture very, very well. Because it is not all who quote the scripture. It is not all who read from the Bible like I was doing who will be for the truth. I could be reading from the Bible like I was doing when I represent the devil. So you need to know your scripture very well as a Christian. So that when you see me reading the scripture and I'm telling you, you can also rebut or push me back by a... a, a a cross-reference scripture that will tell me what I'm doing is not true because it is against the Bible. Because remember, the Bible is very consistent for this is what we have seen from what Jesus was doing. The devil quoted the scripture, but Jesus showed that the Bible is very consistent. One scripture interpret another scripture. So he went on to actually use a cross-reference and said, it is also written. That's what we need to do. And we must also now, how then do we Keep ourselves or learn to live in the world. I think that, that is the key question I, we need to answer today. So how do we then live in the world just like Jesus did? Because Jesus lived the word. And I say to remember, today we are looking at how you can live the word. You must live in the word. So it's living the word. That's what we are looking at. 
First, I said, you need to know exactly the real word, just like Jesus did, so that you can use it. Because knowing it is it not enough. You need to know the word. And when I say live the word, it means more than knowing because you know it and then you'll be practicing. It becomes what you do every day. That's living the word. And this is what Jesus was doing. He was living the word. He knew it, but he was living the word. The devil knew the word, but the devil was not living the word. This is where the difference is. So as a Christian, you must know the word and live it. That means you know the word and act upon the word. That's why in all instances, Jesus kept on going back to Jerusalem and reminding the devil that there is need for me to retell the command. The command from the scripture is you must live the word. You must live the word. You must live in the word. You devil, you are not living in the word. You are a liar. You represent darkness. That's what he did all, in all instances. So this is what we need to do. So if we allow us to be on God, to be, uh, actually on God, to put the God of the word on us, we will be like Jesus. That's what we need to do. It is imperative. It, it is imperative. When something is imperative, it is mandatory. It is a command that you need to know the word of God. When you know the word of God, then you can actually put that God of the word like Jesus did. And then number two, if you want to know how can we then as Christians uh, live the word. Number two. You, you need to actually take heed of what is said in Romans 8, verse 31. We are all reminded that we need to take actually the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit is actually God's word. This is the Spirit that we have seen Jesus using to actually fight the devil. Each moment the devil was coming, Jesus was using the sword of the Spirit, which is the word. He would go back to the scripture and quote in all instances. He was using the sword of the Spirit. So put the devil to the sword of the spirit of the, of the, the, the word of the spirit. Put the devil to the sword of the spirit, which is the word. That's what Jesus was doing. So this is the ammunition that we have. And remember in Ephesians 6, Paul talks of us actually putting the full armor of God. But I'm telling you today, the strongest part of the full armor of God, yes, we have things like faith, faith and all, all things the belt of truth and all that, it's all rolled in the word because the word of God is the word of truth. So that is the, 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 the full embodiment of uh, the full armor of God here, what we're talking about. You need the sword of the spirit. That's what Jesus used. And I'll say the sword of the spirit is the word. This is what Jesus used in all instances, using the sword of spirit to actually put the devil away. So that's what we need to do. So if we use that, which is written in Romans, uh, 3, Romans 8, verse 31, you must know that the ultimate, remember that the word is the ultimate truth. And when you have the ultimate truth, it means you must stand in all instructions that are given by the word. This is what Jesus was doing. In all instances, he was standing in the instructions that are given by the word. That the word says, I cannot stay, I cannot change the stone into bread. Because that's what, not, that's what not matters. What matters is man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word of, by, by every word that comes from God's mouth. So knowing the word, standing in it. And then you can actually answer all situations thrown at you by the devil. So it is imperative that you know the word. Hallelujah. And you must also remember that when you take up the sword of the spirit, you can now fight it to defeat the devil. And when you do so, you have the truth. You have the sword of the truth. You must now walk. The walk, I will say, you must be on the track. You know, when you walk, there is a pathway. When you drive, there is a road. When you run, there is a way. So you must always be on this track or a way or the road or a path that is Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Don't walk outside those paths. Don't walk outside those roads. Don't walk outside those tracks. The track or the road, the path is Jesus and the Holy Spirit. If you walk outside, it means you would have lost the sword of the spirit which is the power of the word so how do you walk in the path you must always know the word read and practice the word this is what you need to do as a christian because we have seen the devil will come to you in many many ways but use the word 
the devil knows the word, you must also use the word. You can only demonstrate the rigor and the wish that Jesus actually demonstrated there because the devil was coming and that's why I called this the battle of the weeds. It was, I use the scripture, I defeat you with the scripture. I come back and attack you from a scriptural point of view. That's what the devil was doing. But Jesus will say, I will still find an escape. I will still find a shield in the sword of the, the spirit, which is the word. And I will defeat you because I stand for the truth, the word in me. It is me and I live the word and I stand for the truth. But you stand for the darkness and you stand for all lies. You stand for all deceptions. So therefore the light cannot stand, the, the darkness cannot stand against light. So I will defeat you. And this is how we should defeat the devil all the times. But I say to you, brethren, you need to be very, very careful because the devil knows the scripture more than all of us do. So he will use the scripture like he was doing to Jesus Christ to try and actually deceive you. The counterfeit that we once talked about. He wages the counterfeit. And if you are not careful, look at what he did to Jesus. He actually quoted say, if you fall from the highest point of where you are in the temple, God will not let you fall down because he will send his angels. And it is actually written in our uh, Psalms 91 verses 11 to 42. And for your own interest, you must go read also Hebrews 1 verse 14. So yes, in conclusion, all I'm saying to you by today's scripture is if you lack the knowledge and practice of the word of God, you will be defeated by the devil. No, 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 make no qualms about it. There's no doubt about it. You, you lack the knowledge and practice of the word, you're going to be defeated by the devil. The only way that you can conquer is to actually know, the, have the knowledge of the word and also practice the word. That's how you're going to live. That's why this is what we call live the word. That's when you actually take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word. That is the only way. Know it, have the knowledge of it, and practice it. That is wisdom. When you have that, you have wisdom. The knowledge and practice, you put it together. Knowledge and practice of the word is actually wisdom. When you have wisdom, this is now the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit is a word that's underlined by wisdom. And then you can defeat the devil. Hallelujah. You need to remember that. Know the word. Live the word. The example today tells us how you can defeat it. This is how it is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. For those who actually want to be rescued and actually given the wisdom and the knowledge that jesus had in the word those who want to leave the word you can raise your hand i'll pray with you shortly and uh a very brief prayer heavenly father we thank you for today we thank you father for giving us an example that actually teaches us we drew many lessons from this uh biblical example that jesus went through when the devil was trying to deceive him through the word as well and we know the devil also knows the word and we're supposed to have the knowledge of the word. We're supposed to actually practice the word. We're supposed to actually take up the sword of the spirit and we need to practice every day and stand in the word. Help us, Father, that we truly understand your word so that all scenarios, all situations, all deceptions that have thrown at us by the devil will be able to pick that this is a deception the devil is using. And there is a scripture that strengthens me. There is a scripture that I will use as a weapon to actually fight against the devil. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming in today. Use the scripture. Hallelujah. The sword of the Bible. The sword of the spirit. In Jesus' name.